1975, the heart-wrenching story of Sandra K. Beto emerged. At the tender age of 19, Sandra met a tragic end. Her lifeless body was found unclothed and lying face down in Raleigh Creek near Plano, Texas. On April the 27th, 1975, the details surrounding her death were truly disturbing. Sandra K. Beto entered the world on September the 22nd, 1955, in Dallas, Texas, to proud parents, Ali, and Wanda Beto. Sandra's day on Friday, April the 25th, started like any other. She headed out from her home in the morning to make her way to work at the Exchange Bank and Trust in Dallas. The information becomes a bit unclear at this point. Based on the available information, it seems that she was last spotted leaving work at 8 p.m., it was believed that she was on her way home. The morning after, on Saturday, April the 26th, at 8.30 a.m., a patrol unit stumbled upon Sandra's abandoned dark brown Pinto station wagon. The car was found on a frontage service road along U.S. 75 with its flashers left on. After a thorough check, it was confirmed that the vehicle was functioning properly. There was no prior report of Miss Beto being missing. The events that unfolded on that ill-fated Sunday afternoon of April the 27th will forever be etched in the memories of two young boys. As they cast their lines into Rowlett Creek, little did they know that their innocent fishing expedition would take a tragic turn. At precisely 12.37 p.m., their hearts sank as they discovered the lifeless body of Miss Beto, her unclothed form hauntingly floating face down in just 18 inches of water. The investigation was a collaborative effort with close to 30 officers from both the Plano and Allen Police Departments, as well as the highly skilled Texas Rangers working tirelessly to uncover the truth. The Dallas Medical Examiner has determined that Sandra's cause of death was asphyxiation resulting from strangulation. It is truly heartbreaking to know that she was also a victim of assault. Citizens at the time were asked to be vigilant in searching for Miss Beto's lost clothing. She was wearing a shirt, jeans, undergarments, and loafers before she went missing. Despite their efforts, her outfit has not been located. On Tuesday, the following week, Miss Beto was laid to rest at Ridgeview Memorial Park in Allen, Texas. Sandra's parents have departed, their hearts heavy with the burden of not knowing the truth about their daughter's fate. Meanwhile, her little sister remains consumed by a relentless quest for answers, longing to unravel the mystery surrounding Sandra's tragic end. The enigma surrounding Sandra's demise continues to cast a shadow over her family. As we contemplate her existence, let us honor the memory of Sandra K. Beto and hold on to the belief that someday justice will triumph for her and her loved ones. I have many questions concerning this case. Perhaps you would like to discuss them with me in the comments. I wonder if there were fingerprints in the car and if there was any DNA to be found on her body. Was he a hitchhiker? Did he somehow get her to pull over on the side of the road because she thought he was having car trouble? Did she know this person? Where was the crime scene? Was 
the crime scene his car? Did he take her somewhere? How long did he hold her? Did he have her for any length of time? Obviously, Rowlett Creek was not the crime scene. She did not die from drowning. I think because her clothes were gone, he simply threw her in there to try to cover evidence. Do you think he kept her clothes as a trophy? Are they in someone's home now? Or do you think he destroyed them? Let's discuss it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next Friday.